Hello and welcome everybody to class. So I am going to switch the other camera to record. So give me just one second. Record? Yes. Okay, so that is recording and let's go live here as well. <sighs> All right, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, fun day to everyone. Let me do one more thing. Get this all set up correctly. Perfect. Good morning and welcome to cooking class. So for today's cooking class, I want to get everyone settled in. We've got a couple people running late. So what I'm going to do today, I've got two different cameras here. I'm going to turn off one in just a moment, but I'm going to take a moment just to kind of get you familiar with Zoom while we get started. Uh, inside of Zoom, you have a speaker view and a gallery view. I want you to set it to speaker view so that the minute I start talking, you can see exactly what I'm saying. And then for those of you in Zoom, if you'd like to open up the chat box, you can go ahead and chit chat with anyone else within the group while I'm cooking. So the chat box is gonna be a way for you to talk to the other people in the group while I'm cooking without having to talk directly to me. You can also put your questions into the chat box. And for those of you live on Instagram, you're welcome to throw up uh, your questions in Instagram as well. I'd be happy to answer them. So just so you get familiar on what all we have here, we're gonna make a beautiful pumpkin spiced cheesecake trifle. Uh, what I love about this, and I don't know why Americans haven't gotten into the trifle quite like the British have, but all it takes is a beautiful glass bowl like this. And what you're gonna be doing is layering your ingredients so it looks really beautiful and elegant. You could do this traditionally with like a sponge cake, whipped cream, creme anglaise, fresh fruit. Honestly, anything in your house that you can layer up. Think like a granola and yogurt kind of situation, like a parfait but a trifle is much more decadent, much more rich, and much more delicious. So we've got our beautiful trifle dish here. We've got all of our ingredients for our pumpkin spice cheesecake trifle, because let's just be honest, it's finally fall here in Southern California, and what a better time than this to have a beautiful trifle. And then of course, any trifle would not be complete without an amazing cocktail. So we're going to make a beautiful vanilla and rum white chocolate cocktail. It is decadent and rich and the perfect pairing to go with our trifle. All right, so we've got almost everyone in here on Zoom. Uh, for those of you on Instagram, please keep hopping in as time goes on. I'm gonna take a moment to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jennifer Felmley or Chef Jen. I am a personal chef in San Diego. A uh, personal chef means I do private cooking classes, private dinners, small events, and obviously the beautiful world of virtual events now as well. And let me just do one thing over here. I'm gonna stop this video, perfect. So with my virtual business, I'm now trying to bring all those beautiful lessons that I can impart to you in your home through this wonderful platform of the internet. And I wanna give you guys an opportunity to learn all the tips and tricks that I know and just make beautiful food as easy as possible. So what we're gonna start with for today, let's go through the ingredients that are gonna go into the first half of our trifle. So I have some pumpkin puree, and I specifically bought the cheapest one I could so you could see there really is a difference in the pumpkin puree. The more expensive ones will not be as wet and liquidy as this, but this will work perfectly fine for today's recipe since we do have a ton of heavy, uh, sorry, cream cheese going into this. So we have one cup of our pumpkin puree. We have six ounces of cream cheese. Now I know cream cheese comes in an eight ounce block and I'm only calling for six ounces of it. Buy a bagel, take the extra two ounces and put those on top of your bagel. I personally, I only want about six ounces going into this so that it's not quite as dense as if I put all of the cream cheese in. I'm gonna add in a little bit of vanilla extract. You can see here, I'm an overachiever, I make my own vanilla extract. So in this, I have vanilla beans and vodka, uh, the highest proof vodka that you can get. And then you let it sit for about six months. After that six months, you will have imparted all of your beautiful vanilla bean flavor into alcohol. Uh, I add more vanilla beans and more vanilla beans and more vodka and more vanilla beans. And I just kind of keep incorporating and adding more into this over time. 
Obviously the flavor for today is all about that pumpkin spice. We're gonna add in some pumpkin spice seasoning and then sugar to sweeten it all up. So let's get started with that beautiful pumpkin filling. I've got my cream cheese that I've let come to room temperature. I'm gonna take my hand blender and I'm gonna smooth this out. Give me one second. That worked perfect just a moment ago. All right, now we're plugged back in. So let's go ahead and clean our cream cheese. You can see how easily that cream, if this was cold and directly out of the refrigerator, it would not blend at all. So you want to make sure that your cream cheese has come to room temperature before you add it in. Once I've softened up my cream cheese, I'm then going to add in my pumpkin puree. This is the base for a pumpkin cheesecake. So if you didn't want to make a trifle with this, you could very easily take this pumpkin mixture, add a little bit of gelatin to it, put it inside of a pre-baked graham cracker crust, and you would get a beautiful pumpkin cheesecake. So I've got in my granulated sugar. So I put in a third of a cup of granulated sugar, half of a teaspoon of my pumpkin pie spice, and now I'm going to put in a full teaspoon of my vanilla extract. There's nothing more fall, there's nothing more holiday than the flavors of pumpkin spice and vanilla. So if you're going to any holiday parties this year, I highly recommend bringing this dish. Everyone is going to love you for it. So I'm gonna take a moment to blend these together. you want to make sure that you completely incorporate your pumpkin and your cheesecake. You want, or sorry, cream cheese. You want this completely smooth, no lumps left behind. So we're just going to keep blending and blending until this is fully smooth. take one more moment to scrape down the side. So obviously while I am blending this, I can't chat with you. So feel free to chat amongst yourselves in the chat box on Zoom. Or for those of you tuning in on Instagram, please feel free to say hi to one another. Throw a little shout out in there, tell us where you're from or any questions that you might have. Do you wanna do me a favor? Do you wanna press the wave button? So I've got a friend helping me out here today. Can you see where it says wave in the hand? Just click right there, perfect. And do the next one. There's three or four there. Go right ahead, perfect. My handy dandy helper today, my mom, she's here helping me out. So she's gonna say hi to all of you there on Instagram. That's her hand. You can't see her face, but that's her hand. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this up really, really high. So already you can see one of my chef tricks. First, I use a massive bowl. Um, the best thing you can do for yourself in the kitchen is never pick a small bowl. The small bowl, you're always gonna spill over the sides. You're always gonna end up making a mess. So do yourself a favor and always grab the largest bowl possible. Second trip, trip, <laughs> trick. When using one of these bowls and a hand blender, if I just held it upright and turned it on high, I'd splatter all over the place. By turning the bowl on its side, I capture all the splatter. All right, we're almost completely lump free. I'm gonna give one more scrape around the sides. You can already see how pale and light in color that is. And if you were here, you could smell those decadent flavors of like pumpkin pie. It's got all of that kind of cinnamon and nutmeg and vanilla and pumpkiny flavors that we love this time of year. The beauty of this recipe is that your hand blender really does all the work for you. 
and my assistant's going to do the hand the handing off of the extra bits for me. All right, so now that I've got my beautiful blended pumpkin, cream cheese, sugar, pumpkin pie spice, and vanilla. That's what's in this bowl. It is one cup of pumpkin puree, six ounces of softened cream cheese, half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a third of a cup of granulated sugar. Those are the base ingredients inside of here. And then to that, Stacy, stop with the water. <laughs> to that, I'm going to make some whipped cream. So I'm going to put this off to the side. I've got my big handy dandy KitchenAid mixer here. And I'm just going to pull that a little bit closer. It's slightly off camera so you can't see it. So in this, I have a cup and a half of heavy cream that I'm going to use for my trifle. I added in an extra half a cup of cream because I want to make some whipped cream to go on top of my cocktail as well. So it's a two for one. The trick to making really good whipped cream is to have your cream ice cold, to have the bowl that you're going to mix it in, preferably a metal bowl or a glass bowl that you can chill. If you have a cold bowl, cold whisk, and cold cream, you're going to make perfect whipped cream every single time. What happens is the fat sticks to the bowl and the liquid accumulates in the center, so you end up with this perfectly whipped cream. So I'm gonna add my heavy cream into my mixer. To my heavy cream, I am going to add in a third of a cup of powdered sugar. You could use granulated sugar as well, but the powdered sugar has that extra kind of body to it that we all love in whipped cream. And then I'm going to add in one teaspoon of my vanilla extract. I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the vanilla extract because I'm making extra to go into my cocktail. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. We're going to let that start to do its thing. And then let's talk about the base of this recipe. The base of this is our triple ginger ginger snap cookies from Trader Joe's. I am obsessed with these cookies. Uh, they have little pieces of crystallized ginger in them. They're just all those flavors of the holidays that I absolutely love. And if I love a ginger snap cookie, I'll find any way to use it. So what I did with these is I took half of my ginger snap cookies, put them into a Ziploc bag, and then crushed them with a rolling pin. Now, obviously, I could have used a food processor. I'll put my cookies into the food processor, hit the pulse button a couple of times, and let them break up. 2020 has been one hell of a year, so beating the living daylights out of these cookies with a rolling pin was my happy place. So if you need to take out any of your stress on 2020, please feel free to pound away at your crackers. You wanna hit the wave button again? Oh, I don't think you missed it. Hello to everyone joining in. All right, so I started out low on my whipped cream and then I'm gonna speed it up. You can now see my table shaking as I speed it up. What I want to do is I wanna whip this until I can see lines through the center and then I'm gonna finish whipping it by hand. The biggest trick I can give to people is never whip your cream completely with a hand blender or a mixer. You want to make sure that you whip it until you can see lines through the center and then you finish the rest off by hand. What happens is your cream goes from whipped cream to butter really, really quickly. I have no sound. It seems like you've muted on the live. All right, will you turn up the volume and see if we can get volume on the live. So the two buttons right there, the top button. Top. <laughs> so on the left hand side, there's the two buttons. Yep. Sorry. Hold on one second. I'll come do it. All right. All right, Instagram, can you hear me now? Give me a thumbs up on Instagram if you can hear me now. Oh, perfect. You can hear me loud and clear. Yay, we fixed it. All right. Thank you very much for letting me know there was no sound. That is always key to letting someone know what's going on because I can't see what you see. All right, so here is my cream. I have whipped it until it's soft and runny, but it draws a line through the middle. So my whipped cream or my, my KitchenAid mixer has done most of the work for me, but I want to finish doing this by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and take my hand and I'm just using the whip that came with the KitchenAid. And I want to go until it makes a stiff peak. So I'm not quite there yet. 
No need to dirty another piece of equipment. I can just use the whisk that's already in there. Perfect. And that is how simple it is to make whipped cream. You really don't need to buy the can of already made cream in the grocery store. If you want to, you're welcome to, but you don't have to. All right, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. Now my next trick for you is we're gonna take half of our whipping cream and we're gonna add it in to our pumpkin mixture. So because I didn't have sound before, I'm gonna reiterate one more time what is in my pumpkin mixture. So in this bowl is one cup of pumpkin puree, one third cup of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, and six ounces of cream cheese. I blended those with my hand blender until they were perfectly smooth. And now to lighten it up, I'm gonna fold in my cream. To fold, you wanna cut through and fold over. So I'm gonna scrape the outside. I do not want to stir this. If I stir, I'm gonna stir out the air that I incorporated into my whipped cream. And I want that luscious, light, airy texture. I do not wanna stir it out. So I'm cutting down and folding over cutting down and I want to make sure that I get all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to scrape and fold on top of itself. I want there to be almost no streaks left behind. Fabulous. We're almost there. All right. So you can see this is almost doubled in volume by adding in that whipped cream and it's really lightened it up for me. So my next trick for you is I am going to put my whipped cream and my pumpkin into a pastry bag. If you have a Ziploc bag, use a Ziploc bag. I'm an overachiever, I do this for a living. So I'm going to take and put this into these wonderful glass Ikea vases. It's a silly thing, but it works perfect for holding my pastry bag. If I tried to hold it in one hand, I could slop all over plates, I could make a mess. By doing it this way, I now have the perfect vessel to hold my pastry bag while I fill it. Sometimes in life, it's just the little things, like when you can find a, the perfect vessel to hold your pastry bag. All right. So I started with my pumpkin and cream mixture. And I'm just going to press that all into my bag. If I had a rubber band, I would rubber band this shut. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my whipped cream. So let's go ahead and fold over the top. So I made a little bit of extra whipped cream for my cocktail. So I'm going to put almost all of this whipped cream into this bag. So let's take a quick check in with those of you on Zoom. Are there any questions over here? All right. Looks like everyone's doing well. For those of you on Instagram, if you have any questions, please feel free to speak up. All right, I've got my whipped cream. I've got my pumpkin mixture. Now to start with my trifle. I am not usually one who is a fan of anything from the perfect pantry, um, or Pamper Chef, sorry. Pamper Chef has not always been one of my favorite things. This, for some reason, is the greatest Pampered Chef item ever. One, it comes with a lid. So once I make my trifle, I can put a lid on and take it anywhere I want to go and not have to worry about it. Two, it comes in two pieces. So if I just wanted to make a big bowl of dip, I've got a dip bowl. If I want a riser, like let's say I'm making something for friends or family, I can put a beautiful plate on here, and suddenly this becomes a cake stand. So. The one of the things I love from Pampered Chef is this beautiful trifle dish. Now, to layer my dish, we're gonna start with our crumbled pieces. You wanna make sure that you put the crumbled pieces on the bottom. Uh, they're going to get all of that moisture that kind of makes its way down to the bottom. So this is gonna work almost like a graham cracker crust. But I also wanna get this beautiful effect of a ring of cookies around the side. 
So I'm gonna place in my cookies to make a ring around the side. What's gonna help, so I'm gonna put just a little bit of this pumpkin mixture. So let me cut off the tip. I'm gonna put one ring of pumpkin mixture in, and that's gonna help to work as a base for me to put my cookies in. This is a slightly OCD thing, but it looks beautiful. So if you get the chance, make a beautiful ring of cookies. It just looks really elegant. It takes a little bit of effort, but it looks so much nicer. Let's go all the way around. This is again why I like the Trader Joe's cookies because they're smaller, they look really pretty. Uh, the grocery store cookies, they're a little bit flatter. They don't give you quite the depth that you get with the Trader Joe cookies. So for those of you just joining, these are the Trader Joe's triple ginger ginger snap cookies. All right, so we're back to our pumpkin mixture. And now we're gonna fill this all in. So we get a beautiful layer of pumpkin and that's gonna fill in all the gaps. Lovely. And I wanna save about half of it for my second layer. Now I'm gonna switch over to my cream cheese. And I'm gonna start at the outside and then make my way in. When doing your trifle, it's always best to start on the outside and work your way in so you get that beautiful ring that everyone can see. So now I'm gonna go in with my second round of cookies. And now they sit right on top of my cream cheese. We're just gonna go all the way around. And you can already see that beautiful delineation, those beautiful lines. Keep going all the way around. All right, just a few more. Perfect. And then we're back in with our pumpkin mixture. And again, I wanna start on the outside and work my way in. You can see all of that beautiful pumpkinness. And then right in the middle, Perfect. And I'm just gonna take my spoon and smooth that out just a little bit and kind of push it up against my cookies. So it goes right up against the sides. And then my last and final layer is going to be my whipped cream. And we're just gonna finish off that bag. Perfect. And then I'm gonna take the same spoon. <laughs> My assistant here today is very happy to take the bag as soon as I'm done so that she can lick it clean. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take my whipped cream and I'm gonna make sure I fill this all the way out to the edges. Perfect. And then the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little bit of my cookie crumb and kind of dust that around the top. And then with all of my desserts and all of my dishes, since COVID, I've been kind of listing what I refer to as optional garnishes. I know that ingredients can be really hard to find these days. So I really like to give you the option of using whatever you have on hand as a garnish. So one of my optional garnishes would be to use sliced strawberries because they give a beautiful effect. Uh, you could use blueberries or raspberries or blackberries. Any of your berries will give a really beautiful additional kind of color to this dish. For today, I am going to use pomegranate seeds. I had some leftover from a cocktail that I made for an event last night. And I think they're gonna give a beautiful color and crunch. And I'm just gonna go right around the top, all the way around. And that's gonna give me this bright pop of red. But also what's really nice is the tartness of these pomegranate seeds against the sweetness of everything else will be absolutely beautiful. 
And I like a nice thick layer all the way around the rim. And I've got a little missing spot there. Come back over here. All right, so let's go ahead and show you what this beautiful tripe, and the beauty of this is I can stick it and go right off. See how beautiful that looks? Take this to any party and people will think that you love them dearly because you made something beautiful. Obviously, I've got different layers and not the perfect thickness, but who cares? It's gonna taste delicious. Now I would put the lid on and let this sit in your refrigerator for at least a half an hour before you eat it. You wanna make sure that your cookie starts to soften up and your flavor starts to melt. So while that sits for the next half an hour, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my cocktail. All right, so let me go ahead and just wipe off my bits and pieces. Made a little bit of a mess. But what is it? I say that I'm the Carl's Jr. of chefs. If it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. So let's go ahead and get started on our cocktail. I have a vanilla liqueur. If you don't have a vanilla liqueur, vanilla vodka will work. I like to use a really nice spiced rum. Again, we're getting into the holidays, so those spice flavors of cinnamon and nutmeg, all of those flavors that you love will be found in a nice spiced rum. I obviously went with a Captain Morgan's private stock. So we're going with a really nice high level, but even like a Myers or something like that will work beautiful as well. I'm also going to add in heavy cream. We've got heavy cream going into our trifle. I love a good, thick, rich, almost like a, like a, a white Russian type of cocktail, something that's gonna give you that body. But we can't go all heavy cream, that's just too decadent. So we're gonna put a little bit of whole milk or half and half or even, um, just realized I got schmutz on me. Uh, heavy cream, or you could do, um, instead of heavy cream and milk, you could do half and half. And then I've got, this is Giardelli white chocolate powder. So most of your white chocolate cocktails are going to use Godiva white chocolate liqueur. I personally like the white chocolate powder. If you've ever had um, coffee bean coffees versus Starbucks coffees, you find that like the coffee bean tends to be thicker and richer. They use powders versus syrups. By using this white chocolate powder, you get all of these kind of milk solids and other things that thicken it up and give it a little bit more body and viscosity. So I'm a big fan of the white chocolate powder. I've got a lovely glass to pour it into. I'm going to obviously use a strainer for when I mix my cocktail. I have a jigger to measure out my alcohol. I have a classic cocktail shaker to make my cocktail in. And then I've got some optional garnishes. I mentioned before that in 2020, it's been very difficult to find everything at the grocery store. So I like saying that all of your garnishes are optional. So obviously I'm making a white chocolate cocktail. So I have a beautiful bar of Giardelli white chocolate that we can shave into our drink. I personally like a nice full cinnamon stick just dropped into my cocktail because it's gonna give me that kind of spice flavor. And then if you wanted to, there's a little bit of nutmeg that you could sprinkle on top. And then of course, our whipped cream. So let's get started with this cocktail. For your cocktail, you're going to start with a couple of ounces, uh, sorry, an ounce and a half of your vanilla liqueur. Before I do that, I'm gonna throw my ice. So I've got ice in my cocktail shaker. I am going to add in my ounce and a half of vanilla liqueur. And then I'm going to add in a half an ounce of my spiced rum. So I want vanilla as my base and then I want those spiced rum flavors to follow up. And then to that, I'm going to add my two ounces of cream, my one ounce of whole milk, my white chocolate powder, and I'm gonna take my lid, pop that right on top, and I give this a really good shake. Now you wanna make sure that you shake this really vigorously because you want to dissolve that powder. 
I always tell people that when you can see that frost on the outside of your cocktail shaker, that means you've shaken pretty well. I'm gonna give it one more good shake. Perfect. Now the fun part is getting it to separate. There we go, one more time. There we go. All right, next step, I'm gonna take my strainer. I'm gonna pour directly into my glass. Oh yeah, white chocolate decadence. Fabulous. All right, now to top this. We're gonna start with our whipped cream. Because who doesn't like a nice big dollop of whipped cream right on top? And then on top of my whipped cream, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of shaved white chocolate. And I love these little curls you get as you shave. And I've got right down the side with a vegetable peeler. So I get these lovely shavings of chocolate. And then my last step is going to be to put in my cinnamon stick. So, cheers everybody. Mm. So we have our beautiful white chocolate cocktail. We have our beautiful pumpkin spice trifle. Thank you guys for joining me here today. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'd be happy to share the recipe as well. For those of you who got to join along in our Zoom class, you've already been sent the recipe so you can cook along, but please feel free to follow me on Facebook at Chef Jen Cooks, on Instagram at Chef Jen Cooks. I am also on Twitter and I'm about to start a YouTube channel, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed these beautiful recipes and I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. All right, I'm going to stop that one.